Oh God, we talked too long. I wanted to tell you about Mahakajipa. Okay, Mahakajipa, he's supposed to be still in that chicken foot mountain. And many people went there for pilgrimage and buying souvenir stuff from there. They believe the souvenir have blessings from the great Mahakajipa. But he himself, the real monk, is staying in that mountain. Nobody can see him, of course. He's hidden inside a cave within the mountain. But he himself has just a manifestation body. And that body is in China as a human, just doing what we're doing as a human. So you see, we all have a duty, even as you are human, but who knows, maybe you came from a higher heaven and you are still in the higher heaven, your soul, your real self, and you are connected here on earth with your physical body through this kind of silver cord that keeps you alive on earth. As soon as that cord is cut or severed in some way, then you can't stay alive anymore. And if you happen to, for example, go without breathing for some reason, like in an accident or something, then uh, the cord is still there to keep you alive. But if your soul happened to be dragged into hell, then if you stay in hell too long, you can't come back to the body anymore because at that time the, the silver cord that connects your soul to the body would be dissolved. Your body that goes to hell is an astral body. You will feel as much pain as in the physical body, even more so, because if you have a physical body, you are shielded from all kinds of hellish feelings. Even if you are still on earth, walking around or laying in bed, half dead, and your astral body is already in hell and has all kinds of punishments, you would not feel much in the body. That is the thing. But when your body is gone, you will feel it, of course. When you're in hell with the astral body, you feel everything so intensified, so magnified, because you have no physical body to shield you. Many people who are already in hell, their souls are attached to that astral body. We have many bodies, and astral is one of our bodies. We have also the causal body and a Brahman body, from the third level, and an astral body, yes. Anything that's done to the astral body, the human body doesn't feel much, but sometimes if it's too strong, it could cause some sickness or some weird feeling, headache or some nightmare, stuff like that, and it feels as painful as if you are in hell. But mostly if you're still alive because of your destiny karma like that, then even if you're already punished in hell, you do not feel pain in the physical body. So Mahakajipa has a manifested physical body on earth, just like a human, just like I told you before, the king of karma lives near Australia. I don't want to tell you. I don't want you to go there and run around looking for him as a human, in a human body, but he is a king of karma, and he's still doing his job, both in the human world as well as in the invisible world, like astral world, for example. Oh, we talk sometimes, yeah. Now, Mahakajipa was a great being, a great saint. As a monk, he lived totally opposite to his life before in a mundane world. He was the son of a very rich family, so he had everything he wanted and lived in luxury. But since young, he always wanted to be a renunciate, to practice spiritually. He didn't want to stay in the house, continue his business or enjoy the luxury. Just like the Buddha, he was a prince, but he renounced everything just to look for enlightenment, to attain Buddhahood. Uh, Mahakajipa was even married to a beautiful woman, 
the most beautiful woman that anyone could see at that time in that uh, province, or maybe in the whole country. <coughs> Excuse me. I I want to tell you why I cough, but I wonder if I should let me ask. Yeah, it's don't worry. I'm not really sick or anything. It's just the karma that uh, manifested from my interference with some war people. Namely, uh, this is the lot the king of karma even told me himself because I, I didn't bother so much. <coughs> Sometimes the information just came to me voluntarily naturally, without me searching for it. Or maybe sometimes I think about the question in my mind and then some king of a different uh, department would tell me, would, you know, give me a message. There are many kings of different fields, different uh, missions. They all came to me uh, one day because I was called King of Kings of Kings of Kings, yes. And that also means King of all the past kings and King of the present kings and King of all the future kings, that's why. And there are many of them, King of Peace, King of War, King of the Wind, King of the Stars, King of the North Star, King of the South Star, King of Benevolence, all kinds of kings, <laughs> even king of the zealous demons or king of uh, zealous ghosts, they all came to me one day. Ah, uh, 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 when was it? Uh, must be last year then, last year sometime in uh, April, yes. Some occasion they all came just to pay respect. I don't bother them that much because they are busy. They're doing their job. And only when really necessary for some information, I would call upon them and we talk. So we don't talk a lot like the way I talk to you. I wasn't aware of such a serious name before. I thought it was too long and they should cut it short. If they want to call me king of kings, okay. And the other ones that just say, oh, case, oh, case, means of kings, K or case. <laughs> something like that. When I was writing something and they spelled it out to me, I said, don't make it too long. I'm lazy to write. So that's why I was telling them like that. And uh, I said, why do you all have to keep calling me this? It takes too long. Because sometimes they have to spell it to me and they don't call me just you and I. They call me king of kings of kings of kings. And it's just too long for me. So one day they all came and say, this is why we call you king of kings of kings of kings. Because you are our king. And in the future, when other kings come, you also be their king. And in the past, you were also king of all the kings. So now you know also all these questions in your mind, why I have this and that title. I didn't ask for it. The first time, I also didn't know it was me <laughs> who talked to me. <laughs> so I asked, who is it? And uh, I told you already, I said, this is the ultimate master. I said, oh, oh, very honored to know you. So the voice said, it's you yourself. There was a, an accompanying being next to the King of Kings who would tell me this and that and others. He introduced my title to me, <laughs> which I never thought of. Too busy, you know, and what for? Even if I'm King of Kings, what good does it do me anyway, yeah? I renounce everything already. It's just that I have to still keep remembering some because that helps me to draw out much more power so that I can use it to help this world as much as I can. That's the reason why I still need the title, some of them, okay? And uh, I never thought I would tell you uh, that I'm Maitreya Buddha 
or the king of Dharma will turn in because I never thought about all these things. I'm too busy working every day. Just like if you graduated or if you're a doctor, you can't keep thinking, oh, I'm a doctor, I'm a doctor, uh, how wonderful, how great. No, you're just taking care of your patients. That's all. It's only the patients that keep reminding you that you're a doctor. People who you are dealing with remind you that you're a doctor because they call you doctor this, doctor that. Yes, they even call your wife <laughs> Madam Doctor, even if she doesn't have any doctor degree, <laughs> because she is the wife of a doctor. Yeah, in German they call a doctor's wife also Mrs. Doctor. Yeah, Frau Doctor. <laughs> so it's nice. See, if you're a woman uh, <laughs> and you want to be called doctor, just marry one. <laughs> Very convenient. You don't have to study <laughs> many, many years and work so hard for your doctor degree. Mm.